So the point of today's Ender 3 project is to go from this to this. Please note, this procedure can be dangerous to you and your printer, so if you do not know what you're doing, find someone that can help. This will also void your warranty, so make sure you're comfortable with that before proceeding. If so, here we go. For this project, you're going to need your new hot end shroud and all its components, as well as this carriage switch that I completely forgot to address in the video, but is necessary to the Neo V2 so that the carriage does not slam into the switch. All of these parts are linked in the description below. I have also linked the purchase parts with my Amazon affiliate links I earned from qualifying purchases. Next, two 40 by 40 by 20 millimeter Noctua fans. These are 12 volt and you will need buck converters. You can also use 24 volt fans and omit the buck converters, but I like Noctua's. You will also need a soldering iron and all the accessories, a basic voltmeter, wire cutters, heat shrink tubing, and hot air gun or hair dryer if you're not going to be using the buck converters. You're going to need some M3 bolts and nuts and many projects on Thingiverse require these, so there will be a link in the description and I highly recommend you get a box of these. You'll also need a needle file set to clean up your prints and the Allen wrenches that came with your machine. And some glue or some other types of fasteners for your converters. Hopefully this covers everything. This may actually be part one of however many because there are actually four fans in this machine, but I think these two are the noisiest, so let's get started. First, we're going to remove the screw behind the hot end with the Allen wrench. I think it's this one. There are three little tabs on the shroud that need to be unclipped. I found that unclipping the left side first made this much easier. I will turn off this machine soon, but you can see the fans painting. I'll show you how to probe the wires, but almost certainly the black wire will be ground. It may even stay on the pen. Unplug your machine if you haven't already. Now we'll want to remove these two screws here. Then you can set the hot end cover to the side. I am placing the screws back inside the case in case I ever decide I want to put it back on. And I don't think you need these particular screws for this project anyway. Now let's move on to the other fan. The cool thing about this bolt set is that it also came with a bunch of Allen wrenches in case you can't find the one that came in the machine. Not even sure that this printer came with one for this fan. Now we'll want to clip these zip ties. Be careful not to nick the wires. I guess just to make things easier, we'll just take the whole lot end apart. There is no need to disconnect the hot end or the extruder. If you want to use these fans again later, make sure you leave enough wire to splice them, which I will do here. Again, make sure you are unplugged while cutting the wire. We will still probe for voltage, but that will be after the fans are removed. And clip goes your warranty. Remember that the extruder blower is the yellow and blue wires. Slip these carefully, especially if you need to use a knife. I don't think these wire cutters are small enough for this. Nope. So let's try to do it the hard way. It's easy to cut your wire with this method, but I have a fair amount of practice. Once they're all stripped, spread apart, be sure that they are not touching anything. Hey, before we probe these wires, why don't you probe the like and subscribe button to help out the channel? Now we can plug this back in to probe the wires. On a digital meter, you can tell the positive and negative from the readout. If the positive probe is on the ground, it will show a negative number. Conversely, if it's on the correct wire, it will show a positive number. An analog meter can be used the same way, but you'll see the needle pegged to the left. So our red and yellow wires are positive and the black and blue wires are negative. Unplug the printer and remove the rest of the mount.
Remember to save your parts. We will reuse a few of these screws. Put on your new mount. Make sure it is snug. I'm mounting this first so that I can figure out where I'm going to mount my butt covers. I'll clip these long legs on the back of the board for more space. You can see the new cover just slides into the board. Bruh. Yep. The hot end just slides in here. We are going to remount the leveler here, but we need to remove this bracket and grab a couple M3 bolts and nuts. Orienting this is pretty simple. Just make sure that the Creality logo is facing outwards from the hot end. You may be able to reuse the original bolt, but I'm going to use these longer ones with bolts for stability. The originals are not long enough, and I do not want to just rely on the plastic. I'm going to dry fit these just to see where I want to put the butt converters. I don't mind them showing. In fact, I think they kind of look cool, but if you don't, by all means, get smaller converters. For this printer, you will want everything blowing towards the components, so down towards the chute or towards the hot end. If you look at your fan, there's an arrow that shows your airflow direction. So just slide these in here, easy enough. Most of the time, airflow goes towards the sticker, but that's not always the case depending on the brand of fan. It also helps to ensure that your blower is pointed towards your extruder. I installed the left side chute, which I don't need at all for this project. Bruh. So here's the correct one put in place. On knock two of fans, ground is black, yellow is fan speed, and red is hot. But definitely look at your fan documentation to be sure. Here you can see me experimenting with board placement, deciding where I want everything. I then cut my wires to length for how I want them routed. You can remove the fan speed wire. All right, so I'm back. Um, I managed to find some small wood screws. I used some washers to keep it from going too deep. Um, lots of mounting options, you can figure that out. I've already soldered one side on um, for the inputs. Uh, do this side real quick and then we'll do some voltage testing. I've already tinned the uh, wires so they should go on pretty easy. this around. All right, I'm gonna plug the printer in real quick and then uh, we're gonna do some testing at the outputs and adjust these to 12 volts. All right, so we're at 20 volts. So what we'll do is we'll adjust this little pot and see if I got something I can adjust it with. Let me see if I can hold these here. Oh, there we go. All you do is you adjust till you're around 12 volts. These fans are pretty hardy. I wouldn't worry about frying them. Um, you just can't run them too long at over voltage. You can't damage them, don't, don't get me wrong. There we go. We are right at 12 volts. Let's go ahead and solder the fan wires on.
All right, that side looks pretty good. Good enough for a test at least. All right, fan fired right up, no problems. Now on to the other side. You would do the exact same steps to this side, except that this time you need to preheat your extruder so that the fan is being told to power on. Otherwise, it is exactly the same. Adjust the pot to 12 volts, unplug the printer, solder the wires, and if you remove the assembly like I did, just put it back and give it a test. All right, if all goes well, this fan will turn on when I tell it to preheat. Nope, hold it to level. And you just get the weight. All right, preheat PLA, let's see. There you go, spins right up. Thanks for sticking around, stay tuned for the next upgrade and don't forget to subscribe. I live stream daily so everyone can enjoy some 3D printing zen.